Yeah. yeah. Welcome to Outside with Gorilla Nims. Yeah. That's how we starting it, you heard? Yeah. Real Brooklyn shit. Real Brownsville shit, you heard? That's how we doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Break a minute. <laughs> Can't make a minute. Ha. Don't ever disrespect me. Ever, 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 ever disrespect. Ever, ever, ever disrespect. Ever, ever, ever disrespect. Welcome to Outside with the Will and Them, episode 20. The only podcast that all of the members is still got EBT cards. <laughs> you heard? We really outside. We live in Coney Island. It's like 65 degrees. The summer is over. You heard? <laughs> it's supposed to rain, so we we on the boardwalk under these one of these little fucking gazebos. You know what I'm saying? Right in front of the parachute jump. Real Coney Island shit. To the right of me, author, rapper, fucking fashion icon, and a Brooklyn motherfucking OG. You got Thurston How to Thurston. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Bro, what's good? Fucking skillionaire, you heard? Yeah. yeah. To the Thank right of him, you got my man, Triple Bypass. Yeah, you know yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, young panty sniffer, you heard? <laughs> Damn. The panty raider. You and then to the, the, to the right of him, we got my boy Six Low, you heard? Yeah. Six Low. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Six, what's up with you, man? I'm I never cool seen there, you man. this fly on the pod, man. I had to. I had to, you know, show respect to the homie, you know what I'm saying? Nah, nah, yeah, Pasta nah. only one that ain't wearing polo like a dickhead. <laughs> I'm, I ain't want to be the old nigga, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> well, he called us old niggas, Damn, man. what's up, man? What's up with this guy, man? Yo, one thing about polo is shit is never go out of style, though. Ever. You know what I'm saying? That's, That's like literally fact. one of the only brands. That will never go out of style. Shout out to uh, Ralph Lawrence. You know what and that, that, that's Sorry. because of low life. That's, that's why fact. Polo. That's there was a time when Polo was going out of style, and niggas was telling me, "You still wearing that Polo shit?" They're like, "That shit played out." I'm like, "I will punch you in your face because <laughs> it's basically saying you're telling me I'm played out." Facts. And this is like in the late '90s. Yo, even in the late '90s, Polo was getting played out, and Tommy Hilfiger was starting to dominate facts. him. He was on so it. everybody was yeah, switching facts. to Tommy. You I know switched. What I, mean? I switched. You switched. Yeah. Everybody switched, man. That's and when I left um, Polo alone. When Tommy came and I started wearing other shit. Only thing that Tommy like, Hilfiger I would still rock is they fucking boxes. You know what I'm saying? The the old school classic boxes. Yeah. The, the Aaliyah boxes. Yeah, yeah, I call them. facts. Like, Aaliyah used exactly. to be rocking on. Yeah. You know but that's a, another reason why I wanted to have Thurston on. Besides being a super dope MC, he's like a fucking hip hop historian and just a culture historian. You know what I'm saying? For somebody that been a New York City historian, which is the most important to me. And he's Boricua, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and there's not that many that. of us clap out there. Clap it up for that. You know what I'm saying? Clap it up for that. Yeah, because, we here, baby. Uh, there's, the there's, flag is planted. Yeah. That's a fact. That's a fact. Now, we're not going to ask questions like how the low life started. I'm sh if y'all want to know, there's a million interviews he's done where he tells it. But coming up in that code, coming up in Brooklyn at that time, in what, the 80s? Yeah, the 80s. Explain Brownsville in the 80s. For Puerto Rican. in the 80s for a Puerto Rican, you got to fight every day. Damn. So you eventually going to get nice with it because I was tested all the time. Even by some of my best friends today were some of the ones that tested me. But, you know, it's, it's a training ground. I, I put it like that because without that, I would have never been the man I am today. I would have never been walking this path. But it was just ruthless, man. Ruthless, poverty, project, people stacked on top of each other. And then, you know, you walking down the block as a Puerto Rican and niggas out of nowhere screaming, Cuban, Cuban. <laughs> like, yo, I've been disrespected for no reason. I remember sitting in the pizza shop, meeting a pizza. Somebody walks in, he goes to the, to the counter to order a pizza and screams. I'm just sitting at the table minding my business. Niggas scream, Vic Pussy. <laughs> but this is the kind of shit yeah. I had to endure Facts. growing up, man, and it just made me have thick skin, and it made me, it made me stand up and get busy every motherfucking time, man, to the point where 
Nobody gonna bother me. Nobody bothered my family. Nobody bothered my friends because it got to that level. You know, motherfuckers made me a monster by testing me so much, man. And that's why I love Brownsville, you know? Facts. Mm. Now, I mean, you see the gloves he got on. He ready at all times, <laughs> still, to this day. That's a fact. You know what I'm saying? Um, Knuckle up. Well, any rappers you came up with back then? Oh, I came up with, um, came up with Sean P, but not as rappers. You know, we yeah, came yeah, of up course. in the hood. Uh, I fucking, I did a bit with Black Rob in 87, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like in, in, in the Brooklyn Brig, downtown Brooklyn Navy Yard and all that, so. They had a jail in the Navy Yard back they then? They had a jail in the Navy Yard back in the days, right across from Fort Greene, like behind Fort Greene. Really? Green. Yeah. Just was, from Brooklyn? Nah, it was, it was dudes from everywhere, from Rikers Island, so they would, you know, that was just another spot they put a lot of really? people in. Yeah. I didn't even know How that. How long was that around? Either. Either. That's huh? crazy. How long was that around? Like, was it? It was there for a while. I think it's gone. I think they knocked down the building was that out. Like a special unit? Nah, it was. Nah, it like was regular population. Boat. Like the Bronx got the boat. You know, the Rikers Island boat. Mm -hmm. I guess that was just like another part of. But it was a building. It was oh, an really? actual building. Yeah, with a couple of floors. You know, I was on the fourth floor. They had adolescent. I was an adolescent still. <laughs> so you know, it was a lot of legends, yo. On that bid that I did. Massive legends were born. Chicky from the Bronx was there. Really? You know what I mean? Black Rob was there. Loose Joint, the dancer, was there with me. That's crazy. He was on the bid with me, my dude Earl Lugo. You know, there was so many of us that dudes became somebody later on in life. Man, I, I want to do a, a fucking documentary called The Class of 87 just about Sorry. all the people who <laughs> was on that bid with yeah. me. That's crazy. To see what they turned into later down, you know what I mean? It was massive impressive. Some of these dudes was on America's Most Wanted, I'm seeing later on in life, you know? That's like as major drug dealers and all that. Now, a lot of people think of, I like to ask this to all the guests because I'm the mayor of Coney Island. What was, as a Brownsville dude, what was your thoughts about Coney Island back then? My thoughts? You know, I was here every week at the <laughs> Himalaya. I was at the ride, Especially right? motherfucking Easter. Easter, you Niggas know, getting man. fly. We hit Coney Island first before we hit the deuce. Every year. Was it low? Oh, you was low out? All the time. Yeah, we with the receipts. The I got crazy. all the receipts the with all the shit. backdrops, all the pictures, yeah, all of facts. that. But I came, we came to Coney Island every motherfucking week. You know, we came for the girls mostly. Of course. Because, you know, I never got on the rides. All we did was stand outside the Himalaya or walk around, wild out, Shout you know, just show yeah. off. But we were here every week, man. This was like, this was one of our second, third homes, man, being in Coney Island. Did you get into beef with Coney Island dudes? <laughs> we leave it at that. Yeah, leave, we it leave it at that. Now, it's what not year? a game out here. There we go. So, y'all know, what year? Did it really be like did polo for you really become like everyday type shit? Like a lifestyle. I would say uh, polo, the brand actually taking over was eight and the 85, 86. But the style was always the same. Yeah, yeah. I did this shit in Adidas. I did it like this with Benetton. I did it like this with Izar. I did the lease suits like this. I did the graffiti on the jacket. You know, I did the sheepskins. I did the same exact style of dress but in all the other labels yeah, before yeah, yeah, we even got to brand, Polo. All the brands. other Has different Polo brands. Been since, since yeah, when? been out since 67. But you know, the hood ain't fully grasp it until like the transition of um, the Genesis into the golden era and things like that. Because when Polo came in, everybody was rocking Coca-Cola yeah, 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 and yeah. Benetton. Like they yeah, was yeah. the dominant ones by 85, 86. You know what I mean? And then you started seeing the polo being sprinkled in, the horsey showing up. Yeah, but polo don't want like people from the hood. Everybody say that. Nah, that was uh -huh. a myth, man. I've never I seen that with my own eyes, you know? And they've also said the same thing about many labels. They Tommy said that, yeah, they yeah, said yeah, Tommy, Tommy what, said it. That's what they yeah. said Timberland right? said it, but yeah. I've never actually seen that article that everyone spoke of. I never saw that with and my own eyes. Like being a Spanish dude, when you go into polo and they put you in the, in the book or whatever, did you feel any animosity or any, any ill will or did they treat you funny or it was like... The company? Uh, yeah. The company? Yeah, the company. They put me in the book. That's yeah, means yeah, love. Yeah, yeah. Not, did, not, not only did they put me in the <coughs> book, they put me on the billboards all over Facts. the world for the book. Yeah, and we talking cool. colossal billboards that span 10 that's floors fun. high. That's validation. 
But the I'm biggest for part, that. Yeah. For that. that's my mom. Yo, the biggest that's part, the that. biggest part about that is I'm in the billboard with my son together. Yes, yeah. my fire. son Jesus. You know, that's, Jesus yeah, that's is Jesus. Fire. Yeah. So that that was the greatest part of that for me. And, and, and my good brother Tom Gould, you know, he took that photo. He did man. the book with you, right? He did the book with me. He also just did the Timberland documentary that's dropping right now. That's fire. They Shout just, out Tom Gould. Tom, what's good? Cause what's uh, good, the, the, the trailer just dropped today, man. Make sure y'all check that yeah. Timberland documentary. Fact. You know your boys are part of it. No matter the weather, when it came to being fly and fashion. Yo, Quiet. have you ever had a one-on-one -on -one conversation with Ralph? Yeah, not. Right. That extended, not, yeah, not yeah. At, at long but route. it's like when when I f first Ralph Lauren, stupid, <laughs> yeah. fuck fucking Ralph Cramden. Ralph McDaniel, Ralph Macchio. Welcome to the podcast, my Ralph Macchio. Yeah. Welcome to outside with the Will and them. You can't be smoking. That's it. This is a new rule. You can't smoke two hours before the podcast, bro. What fucking Ralph? Come on, what, man. What the fuck you mean, what Ralph? It's Mr. Lorman to you, my nigga. It ain't yeah. Ralph. Okay. That's crazy. So, nah, but um, when I first, you know, got brought to him, you know, and they introduced, they didn't even introduce us. They just brought me to him. And he said, I know exactly who you are. And he oh, gripped nah, the crazy. shit out of my hand like, Yo, this man is in his 80s, and his grip yeah. was like a fucking <laughs> construction worker's grip. Yeah, yeah. And he was like, I know exactly who you are. And he gave me a hug, and his brother came, gave me a hug. And then I took a flick with both of them like this. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that's you know what I mean? I know, you know what that, I mean, I, I, I wasn't there. I don't know that feeling, but that's, I would associate that feeling with, like, me when I got signed after doing this shit for 20 years. It's like validation. Mm -hmm. of a lifetime of hard work. You know what I'm saying? And, and I, I say work in a, just a sense that y'all understand it, but when you love it, shit ain't work. Yeah. Dressing fly is a life, that shit is not work. Yeah, Have, was you always the fly dude on your block, on the hood? Yeah, there was, there was a whole bunch of us though. My whole team was all of the fly dudes. So it's like, you know, I got to compete against all my niggas every Facts. day. Fuck well, that every, makes you every, step your game up. Yeah, we was we was our own competition. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, and then, right. you know, the girls was just... Yo, Ralph Norman give you free shit now? All that. Yeah. Everything, you know. <laughs> you know, them boxes be showing up, yeah. you know, little things That's like that. That's what I'm that. talking about. They put you Yo, you know what's about. crazy when I did, um, because I also did his documentary. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm in his life story and... He, he sent me a bouquet of flowers to my home, man, you know, with a nice letter and all that. And, you know, I just felt appreciated. You know what Absolutely. I mean? Like, I appreciated yeah. the fact that they did acknowledge, not just me, man, they acknowledged our culture. Yeah. And they acknowledged my whole low life family and, you know, the movement. They That's acknowledged the movement and they basically stamped it. Because if you look now, polo is the uniform of hip hop, man. Yeah. Everywhere. Yep. Every. State, East, West, South, and everybody. Daddy, are those Bugle Boy jeans you wear? Hell no, ho. You know they polo. Yeah. And they influence <laughs> mad brands. If you look at like a May yeah. or Kith, you can see well, the polo like DNA in all of these brands. Yeah. That's what I was like, going to say about Ralph Lauren. It's like him as a him as a designer building a house, right? You got all of these people like Louis Vuitton, Hermes, all of those, those houses and on fashion. When it comes to Ralph Lauren, like... He's the American house. There is no other house. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And he not only it. that, but all his fashion reflects the, the culture of America. So if hip hop's the, the thriving culture in America, that's why it's going to attach to that brand. When, when he does like a, like a double RL or whatever, and you have mm -hmm. that, like the, you know, farmers, construction, mm -hmm. this, that, every culture of American culture, he's tapped into it. Right. Sport, everything. You know what I mean? And that's to me, that, that's like the craziest thing about it. I mean, like, even we should the hold book, them up. The book is like, it, his, his book, the polo shirt book, it, like the motto and theme behind it was like, it was never about the shirt. It's about the lifestyle. Yeah. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, you know, I don't play no sports. I don't watch sports. I don't want to hear no sports talk, none of that. But I dress like I could play every sport in the world. <laughs> I, I got rugby, tennis outfits, tennis especially, you know, yeah. uh, skiing rugby. outfits, yeah. golf yeah. outfits. And my nigga, I never played handball. I never did baseball. <laughs> I never, like, you know, all my low life family of basketball. I go on the court and drink a 40 and just joke on dudes, you know, but I never touched a sport ever in my life. Ain't nothing wrong with that. 
what made you like grab you say you've been doing this from even before polo but what made you gravitate towards it to be like yo i'm gonna build a whole like lifestyle and movement behind this um i never had that thought it wasn't it wasn't that, that wasn't the, the frame of mind yo, the it, girls, just, it was the girls. organic everything i'm just living my life that's all and you know i'm poor i come from a poor dysfunctional household where there's no motherfucking furniture and you know there's nothing and but when I walk out that door, I look like I came from a mansion or some Facts. shit. So it was like a lot of a lot of the dress stuff and being fly was because you you surrounded by niggas who gonna laugh at everything about you. Absolutely. So this is was how you protected yourself. Your 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 wardrobe became your armor. So it's like fine. nigga ain't nothing to laugh at. What you wanna laugh I at? I see niggas, that bag, bro. I see the bag. Niggas is niggas is picking on every little thing. I told that you y'all what we done. Yeah, I know that. I'm the one that was doing that. It was that, yeah. yeah. Yo, because look, <laughs> if y'all not familiar with New York City. That's why I had to make sure yeah, my shit my was shit shot. Tight. I got to be tight if I'm shooting yo, shots. Yo, if you're not familiar with New York City or Brooklyn in particular, Coney Island and Brownsville and, and the East, and East New York, probably the last three places, neighborhoods in Brooklyn that are not gentrified. Crown mm -hmm. Heights. Yeah, we ain't letting nah, Crown Heights is gentrified. Is gentrified. Okay. Okay. They got, every, they got, got sections, them, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Damn. Brownsville and Coney Island, I mean, Brownsville, you still go to Brownsville, it looks like it's still in the 80s. There's still empty lots out there. Nah, they, yo, I just, I just drove through the Ville, man. There's a brand new building in every empty lot. Really? Every parking lot got a brand new building. Also, maybe it's just East New York. So they, they're just overpopulating it even more. So, you know, it's going to just make it grimier right absolutely. now. Absolutely. You know, more hungry people, man. Facts, absolutely. Now, one thing I always respected, even from, I mean, you've been... You like the generation before me, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, so even me coming up and seeing your articles, not even all the, the unsigned hype, but even you would have, if I'm not mistaken, like the pr promo pages or just the Polo Rican. Mm -hmm. That always stood out to me because there wasn't a lot of, not, not only Latin, because shouts to the beat nuts, and shout, you know, but they wasn't Puerto Rican until Fat Joe pun, but you've been repping, the, I mean, it says it all, the Polo Rican. Mm -hmm. That was the name of one of your joints? Yeah, that was actually a, a, a record on Game Records. Remember Game where M they had- and, M, M and Royce had an album M on there. M and Royce, yeah. they had, it was a single. They yeah, were yeah, all facts. singles. Um, with the girls on the cover. Yep, yep, yep. So I did that with John Schechter. Shout out John Schechter. He hollered at me. He hollered at me. He wanted me to do a record like 50 Cent, How to Rob, you know? And I was like, I don't want to disrespect nobody because I know where that leads to and I don't, I'm tired of that. You yeah, know what I mean? So it's like, I'm not going to do that. So I figured out to just disrespect clothing brands <laughs> instead of actually disrespecting people, you know? So the Polo Rican was born and it was just me saying how I don't fuck with all these other brands and it was all about Polo, you know what I mean? So I definitely had to rep my bilingual tongue on that because also in hip hop, I didn't see many trying to do that. Like even in New York, man, I, I felt like a lot of dudes were scared to, to speak their native tongue. And even though I wasn't that fluent and all that in, in Spanish, yeah, yeah, but yeah. I wasn't scared to be Puerto Rican, no facts, matter where yeah, I went, facts. especially in Brownsville, you know, Absolutely. being Puerto Rican, all the girls are just coming at you. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I ain't had to talk to nothing. Anything is trying to get at me type of thing. But no. I was always proud, man, always proud. Yeah, nah, yeah. and then on the cover, you see a brolic Puerto Rican. You like, oh. All right. He looks like he's not to be fucked. He's with us. So it's yeah. like, yo, he's with he's us. He's representing for us. <laughs> yeah, facts. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Facts. Cause he ain't, he ain't like, just speaking Spanish on some, some hick shit. Not, 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 you know. Yeah. But, but he'll it's beat like you the New fuck York, up. Puerto Rican, yeah, he'll beat like, you the fuck up. Like motherfucking Wolverine out here. You know what I'm saying? And 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 it made us, it made me proud. You know what I'm saying? Thank you. Man. And um, you know that's. And you speak Spanglish in your raps as well, you know what I'm saying? Which is, yeah, that's I learn fire. Spanish every day fucking with Paz because he wow. be saying mad <laughs> shit, man. All right, that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, nah, I, f I fuck with son. His music is hard, too. Thank you gotta listen, you, man. listen to his lyrics and shit. Nah, go hard, man. I'm, I'm a fiend, man. I'm a fiend. I, yeah. I, my brain doesn't stop fucking rolling. How did you day. get your fucking name? Thurston Howe the Third? Because that stands out alone right there. I'm going to tell you what it means first, you know. Uh, you know, thirsting, of course, is my hunger. Yes. So, how is what I do. And then, the third is the, I'm the complete package. I'm the whole complete cipher. The you trinity. Know, man, woman, child, the trinity, the sun, moon, star. I'm the complete package of whatever's supposed to be. Now, I got my name Thurston while running around New York City, 
hunting rap niggas. And you know, my peoples would be with me to the point they'd be like, I ain't going nowhere with you no more. You thirsty. You just want to battle. We, we going to the club. We going to the tunnel. I wind up not even going inside because it's rappers outside. Now I'm outside for two hours just going at it with everybody. So I was doing that everywhere. And that's before social media. You mm -hmm. had to be outside to get Facts. your name yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. Little dudes would never understand that. Yeah, so mm -hmm. I, I hunted down everybody. Everybody. Any rapper I've seen, famous, unknown, whatever. You had to battle me. I tell niggas, tell me whoever and whatever projects I'm coming to. Who you battle? That we, that we yeah, would any know. Any known artists? Let me just say this because they be asking me a lot. And, you know, <laughs> when, when I say about who I battle, it's n and with no disrespect yeah, to facts. them or, or, or chasing clout. I only be trying to explain to people how we do in New York. Yes. This is our playground. Say yeah. fucking name, yeah. man. <laughs> like, say fucking name, man. Fuck that. <laughs> no, nah, I'm nah, saying names. Yeah. I battle you, everybody, that, but with respect. You know, absolutely. With respect. Yeah, yeah, I've stepped yeah. to everybody, including Jay-Z, to battle several times. And mm -hmm. you know, he's turned me down several times. So one day I stepped in his office to shop my demo package and he came out to greet me and I just immediately attacked. Nah. <laughs> but it's only because every time I approached him, he would say, oh, you're not ready, you're not this. So, you know, Shout I, out just, I just, yeah, Shout and like I said, with no, podcast, no clout, no disrespect. That would be fire. I respect these people and everybody from New York know it's about the bars and, and proving yourself like that. Uh, you yeah. don't know you nice until you go get around the nice niggas and see what it is. Cause my thing is when I come in the cypher, I battle 20 niggas yep. by myself. Absolutely. And I be with 10 niggas and I be like, nobody run. I got this. Yeah. yeah, because it's like a fight to me, right? So. Yeah. I'm gonna punch you in the face and not let you get a hit off. That's how I battle. Yeah. So it's like the punchline. No you're no not gonna wanna rhyme yep. after my thousand bars, cause you're gonna realize there's nothing you could do. It's like I hit you with a kung fu style. Yo, I never heard somebody explain it like that. That's exactly how I used to rap. And exactly how I rap now, but exactly how it used to be back then. It's like, yo, I wanna embarrass the you. I wanna I wanna make you go home and and not ever want to fucking rap again in your life. You know what I'm saying? But it ain't on a disrespectful level. It's just like, yo, I'm here to show you I'm nicer than you. Yeah. And you're going to understand. I was that. disrespectful. I no, was, my it bars was, a different was mad frame. disrespectful. No, I was disrespectful, not the bars, just my approach. Everything was like, <laughs> you going to battle me. Like when I shake a nigga hand, I'm, you can't leave. you going to battle me. Tell me about you and Eminem going back and forth or something. Yeah, M, M, me and M, every time we got each, around each other, it was like that. You know what I mean? Because we were so inspired by each other. So M was like, yo, I never heard nobody like you. The same way, y'all, I never heard nobody like you. And so M come to Brownsville to rhyme. Just to, so we could keep shit he sharp. Came to the yo, Paul, yeah, he came to the hood. Yo, Paul Rosenberg told me himself. Paul Rosenberg told me himself, Rosenberg told me himself that him and M took the train to Brownsville two in the morning and was at his crib mm -hmm. and they said they was good because they was with him That's and they fire. was like at two in the morning imagine eminem and paul rosenberg taking the train <laughs> 2 a.m and mm -hmm. going to thirsty come to the crib. podcast take the train to the podcast man <laughs> and they and we rhymed all, all night right. This had to be 97, 98. Wow. That's wow. You know what I mean? So that's everybody nuts. used to come to Browns with a rhyme with me. Um, the Sons of Man used to come to the crib. Dirty used to come to the crib. <laughs> you know, like dudes used to come to just wild out. My crib was one of those cribs where everything goes. You live with your moms? I live with my mom. She just ain't, like she ain't wild out? My mom's is worse than me. This is a display of what my life was like. My mother taught me what she knew best. And this is what she knew. She knew how to keep it funky on the street. <laughs> where do you think I got it yeah, from? Thanks. My moms would come downstairs, cause you know, I lived in the Garvey. The Garvey apartments was like, duplexes. Duplexes, yeah, yeah. two floors, balcony. Yep. I had a mansion in the motherfucking Facts. project. So I'll be, I be working downstairs <laughs> in the studio. My moms come down with a blunt road and, and talk about, Play my song. <laughs> yeah, I still live with my mom. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, was yeah, really yeah, her yeah, song. Yeah. So it was wild. My mom so was always supporting. She threw the battery. Crib right? was the the battery. My crib was where a thousand niggas come daily. You know what I mean? There was That's so fire. much traffic, you know, in and out, man. You yeah. was in the Rap Olympics <laughs> with M? I was in the Rap Olympics. Y'all was a team? We was a team. Me, Eminem. Did y'all win? I won't sit here and say we won. So you lost? We, we never lost, nowhere. We wasn't inspired over there in the battle. Really? Why? I mean, I, I, get, I get a lot of calls and books were hollering at me to talk about this and we never really talk about it because 
it wasn't something that I felt like this was hyping me up. You know how you get around people that yeah, get yeah, you yeah. Have, For one, uh, Wendy Day from the Rap Coalition, she put the whole thing together. Now, Paul told me to ask her that. Paul wow. told me, he said, yo, ask him how him and M got robbed at the 90s at the, the Rap Olympics. It, it was that we was on the West Coast. And then even the DJs that were there throwing on the beast, they was throwing on everything we didn't fuck with. Oh, nah. So, like I said, it was I didn't a even, line up. It was yo, a I didn't up. even want to rhyme, man. That's how I felt that day. You know what I mean? Respect to everybody who was there. You know, it's no disrespect, but it wasn't a situation where I was feeling it. You know, I want to get around motherfuckers that make, yeah, the better you nice. are, the better you make me Facts. when I'm around you or whether we battling or getting on a song. Like, you know, every time I do a feature with somebody, I send them the shit with my verse already. Facts. So I could get you hype. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you could try to outdo me so we can That's make the fact. song better. So inspire me. So I try to do the same to other people. But it was in a situation where I was inspired. And that's, yeah. that's the most I would say, man. I don't want to, you know, put no dirt on nothing. But we, we still shut you down. Me, Eminem, Juice from Chicago. Yeah, yeah, he nice. Monster Juice. Motherfucker. He beat Eminem. At he beat at, 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 at another yeah, battle. Yeah, yeah. But he was also our team. That's Everybody fire. on our team was competitive <laughs> against each other yeah. and challenged each other every day. It's crazy because we would we would have like ciphers in hotels when they would put us to yeah, travel, yeah, yeah. and it'd be the greatest freestylers you could imagine. Uh, Wordsworth, yep. Quest the Mad Lad, Craig G would be with us wow, sometimes. So imagine fire. spending the night, all these niggas sleeping on the floor, just rhyming, <laughs> just rhyming until you fall out type of shit. That's gangster. Because because nowadays artists will be around them, they be too cool. But back then. It was all about the love of hip hop, the love mm -hmm. of rhyming. And there wasn't social media where you could see this guy's whole discography or how he rhymes. No, you got your name up and you got your 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 whole like like the armor on you mm -hmm. and sharpened your sword by rhyming. Yeah, for your all skill. Night. Everything was all about night. your skill. Yeah. I think now yeah. a lot of a lot of rappers they do it for it's like Leo, let's get the money. But yeah. back then the money wasn't really the thing I in the industry. The views, I like never rappers, thought about the fucking That's what money. I'm saying, but now that's, I never that's considered what it is. Make, I didn't even know I was going to get this far. I just wanted to make sure niggas respected me. Yep. And Facts. my skill, my label is called Skillionaire. Yep. Every one of my albums is Skillionaire, yep. Skillosopher, Serial Skillet Skillotary, yeah. yeah, all of that. <laughs> so it's like, to me, in hip hop, I was born before hip hop. So I got a chance to see everybody come through the gate and study them all. Yeah, it's fine. always skills first for me with everything. Fighting, fucking, <laughs> robbing, still, it, everything requires a skill. You Absolutely. know what I mean? So that's how I still to this day approach anything I'm doing. You know, I'm a painting ass nigga. Skill. Podcasting skills. Oh, skills. That's the only thing I haven't touched yeah. is the podcast. Every, everybody keep trying to convince me to do one. And I've been like, you, you, nah, but you got, listen, besides being, like I said, a hip hop historian, I mean, you the fashion, you know, for fashion, and you got the, movies, the, you went everything, mm -hmm. you yeah, touch everything, you and, you, everything and, and, and the big thing about it is, you kicking, you Latin from Brooklyn kicking the door. Mm -hmm. Who knows where it takes you? You don't even know. This That's shit, could, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Clap it up for that, because I, I did a good, that was a good. <laughs> I just don't want to break my foot when I kick in the door, man. You nah, know what I mean? Nah, man. Leave <laughs> some space for yeah, me. Nigga, you know I, 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 I broke my foot popping willies not too long ago. Yeah. You know what I mean? Kick so that I'm real door cautious I'm right now. Right behind you, hey, yo. Yo, so now <laughs> with the with the low lives, with the low lives, do you often not often, but do you see? Because this shit is huge. It's everywhere. Do you ever run into somebody and be like, he ain't doing it right, or he's corny, or? Like what? You to ever, me? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I've never heard nobody tell me. No, not me. to you. Oh, I But do you see other people in like, you know, like say you have the love and loyalty weekend. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Say everybody's dressed in low, but do you see like, nah, I don't I don't want him in the low line. I don't like him. I don't, I, oh, they corny. They style is corny. Or, never. It's not about the clothes to me no more, especially with the growth of low lifes and where it is worldwide, it's about the people, the resources, and you know, the purity of the people. That's Reach. what matters the Hell most yeah. to me yeah, because they can help you with other stuff. I look at people's strengths and not their weaknesses. That's fine. Clothes is not a requirement in low lifes. I'm gonna tell you something crazy, right? We did a big production in Miami for a barbershop called the Chop Shop Barbershop out there, right? Shout out Chop Shop Barbershop. 
So um, when we, we shot a video and everything for them, they threw a big party at Liv and they were having, you know, it was the launch for the video. Yeah. Now in Miami, the, the low life's chapters were just starting, right? So no lie, at least four dudes from the Miami team showed up USPA down. Nah. <laughs> from the Heat? From Miami Heat? Nah, from the low life team in Miami. Oh, all right. So now, you know, one of my mans on the team came to me. He was like, yo, you know, these dudes over. And I was like, he was like, yo, I'm going to go let them. I'm like, yo, don't ruin their night, my nigga. Let them enjoy their night. Then we Tell gonna them put tomorrow. Them on. Yeah. Tell them tomorrow after it's over, act like nothing because this is not a requirement. They didn't know how to do it properly. Then you tell you them the next them. day, don't embarrass yeah, them. Facts. Don't, don't ever disrespect night. me. Yeah. Wearing a USPA <laughs> to a low life event. You know? That's yo, crazy. Yo, another time, you know, we do the barbecues over that's, here. That's them Vims. They yo, we, we do the barbecues the in horse. Highland Park, right? My uncle shows up, nah. USPA, head to toe. He like 60 something years he ain't old. No, he ain't know. He ain't no, know. He, he ain't don't know. give a fuck. It didn't yeah. matter. To nah, him. But Dito, he ain't know. Dito, don't do that. No, this know. nigga, my uncle's a, uh, he go a lot. My uncle Ricky. What up, Uncle Rick? So yeah, he's in every yeah. picture. He's like this, jumping the picture. 60. Because you know, he's straight street dude from yeah, East yeah, New York. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he it, got was, the it was polo, no. He had the polo fit. Yeah, he got that out. Yeah, but photoshopped he, that to, out. to him, he in the pictures, like, I wanted to fuck around one day and go to uh, the shout out Team Low. We, they had an event in Coney Island. I was like, yo, we all should wear USPA and hold up the banners and just fuck with them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, but man. I like can't I'm wear battling. that shit. But like yo, the thing is, I, I've asked because my man was the manager at the start. I said, bro, how the fuck you? He said, yo, this man Taurus that come in here and buy the they thing is, they've been out longer than, than Ralph. Or yeah. with the, they've been Polo Association before Ralph had But the polo. actual Polo Association, like, for the polo team, yeah, not yeah. the clothing. Yeah. So they had the right to use it because they was in court fighting that for. Oh, a while. like a sports organization. Yep. They're it like, was the sports organization since the 1800s. Oh so wait, so that shit ain't even associated at all with mm -hmm. Ralph. No, you what, thought USPA? it was? No, I, uh, I knew it was like knockoff bullshit, but thought, I didn't know it was like, it was it like no chaps. Hell no. <laughs> yeah, I thought that shit was like the lowest of line yo, you nah. could wear. That's a billion dollar company right now, though. Fact. They yeah, everywhere. Yeah, they, they, up, got they outlets. Up. Because yo, people, you know, people, don't people know, think. People think people it is. People don't know, they wear that thinking it's polo. No, yeah, some people crazy. just rock that. Are there what any kinds of polo or Ralph Lauren sub brands that are just off limits? Like, how do we feel about chaps? Um, you know what they, they say, could have had a that polo, polo shirt. shirt. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, a lot of the, I'm, I'm a fly nigga, my nigga. It don't matter what I wear. I'll rock chaps. I'll rock, I rock jail suits, man. Made them shits. Niggas would even ask me, yo, this po in jail, I would, my mother would mail me like patches. Patches, I had in the patches. <laughs> so, yo, you know how you had the, um, the jean jackets and yeah. it got the patch on yeah, the back? Yeah. So my mother mailed me um, some of the patches and I put the, the patch on my chino, the green chino <laughs> jacket in the back. Stupid motherfucking jail asked me if it was really polo. Yo, that's really polo? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. But I used to always put patches on everything. Like, I would put, you, should sell, you, you know, in the tim, like in it. here, in the Timberlands, it has a patch. So I would take out the patch from the inside of the Timberlands and sew it on my um, on my scullies up north. I would I'd get my, my dude Philo used to send me Philo patches. I would put the patch on my green jacket. That's fire. Sure, you know, yeah. I ain't see nobody doing that up north. Up north, I was rocking the big robes and everything with the big crowns, the cookies on my pillowcases. Not only that, nigga, I had this robe my whole motherfucking bid up north. Nigga, if you could hold a piece of low in jail, you, you, you the true nigga. Niggas ain't, niggas ain't letting you live with nothing. Really? <laughs> with every color Gucci sneaker. <laughs> I mean, if, if, if anybody who was up north with you, they'll tell you. They'll tell you how I did it. My cell was like, just like my home. It was lace. Wall to wall carpet. Nah. My moms used to send me the, um. Like a little patch at a time? The a piece, little patch nah, at a time? Nah, the rugs from the bathroom. So she'll so send me three, yeah, yeah. Or three of the same ones. And I just, you know, put them all out in the cells and things like that. Wall to wall. <laughs> Yo, wall to wall carpet is crazy. Yeah. You had to take your shoes off walking in. Oh, her? Yo, show respect. In my <laughs> cell. Take my <laughs> shoes off before you come in my cell. Yo, a That's robe a in jail is crazy. A polo <laughs> robe in jail? Would you walk into the mess hall with that? Nah, you could, you could, you couldn't wear. To the oh yeah, 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 yeah You could wear, a, you know, a hoodie or something. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. You yeah. had to be in uniform. My son said, but, you know, I was carpet. rocking it. I, I would usually <laughs> hang it up because you know it was double bunk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I barely wore it. I just had it hanging on the double so bunk, <laughs> so everybody could see it. 
So you knew where, where my spot was because you see the big crown rope and the crown was like this big and I still got that rope to this day. I'm gonna put that in the museum soon. <laughs> Yo, that's fire. <laughs> did, you ever, did anybody ever try to emulate that style or, or try to in jail? sneak thief your shit? Nah, I ain't never had a lock on my shit or nothing, you know? And I had the store, you know? What you mean the store? The, Soaps on the juggle and cigarettes. Cause I don't smoke, so cigarettes all motherfucking day, you know. But it's shit is real, man. Sometimes you go and get tested at certain spots, absolutely, man, no matter what. So it depends on who. Yeah. Everywhere I walk, I'm a Brownsville nigga. So when I walk in the jail, it's all Brownsville niggas everywhere. So it was kind of easy sometimes, you know. And yeah, plus, yeah. I was always cock diesel, cause I already, you know, I started bidding at 16, and I learned at 16 as the skinny nigga in jail. You gotta be the big nigga. Fact. So I always worked out at 16. I got the thousand push up regimen a day, 500 in the morning, 500 at night. Eating bread and water for real. So I learned to get big and brawly because I got tired of being tested, man, everywhere, even in the street. Once I got big, I used to do bids and not have one fight. Come through like nothing. Yeah, nobody nobody fight the trying big nigga. You. Word. Yeah, but you know, because they also know you're not playing. Yeah, facts. And I'm not a dude coming in jail like I'm a tough guy. I, yeah, I respect. Humble. Yeah. yeah, I'm humble. I, I, I treat it just like my neighborhood. I'm not robbing people. I'm not trying to be the aggressor. I'm just holding it down. Yep, I'm absolutely. just demanding my respect. And I'm living like a king. But I'm not disrespecting nobody. And I rock with everybody. I don't yeah, be living nobody. Sometimes people always get jealous. Yeah, yeah. They always got the haters. Don't you, That's man. regular in life and in jail. I mean, those, those, those people came out too. And you know. It went down how it's yeah, supposed facts. to go down. <laughs> you know? yeah. Yo, I had, I had fights with some big name thug niggas from New York that I wouldn't even repeat their name to re-spark that shit. Yeah, 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 facts. But just fighting some of these niggas put my name prove yeah, yeah, way yeah. up there, you know what I mean? And not just Brownsville, Fort Greene niggas. New York, know, period. Yep, Bronx yeah, niggas, Coney niggas Island names niggas. that ring, you know what I mean? Not regular niggas. Coney Island niggas is... Crazy as a motherfucker. In <laughs> jail, all these niggas outlaws, niggas who drink beer out their boot and shit like that. <laughs> <laughs> For real. I used to always crack jokes on that, you know? Yo, but that's that's another thing. Joking and laughing, that's that's what life's about. And and people don't understand that. Even when I was locked up, you joke and laugh. You know, you on mm -hmm. point, but you also joke and laugh. You know what I'm saying? With your people that you fuck with. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And, and, yeah, yeah. You make a little clip. Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. Wherever you go, different houses and shit like that. But I never heard of the, having the polo carpet and the robe. That shit is. <laughs> that shit is official. I think it's wall to wall carpet. That's fire. Wall to wall carpet, my nigga. Ask anybody who's up there. They'll tell you. They seen it. Cookie logos on my pillowcases. I used to make curtains out of the towels. You know, hang like two curtains from the locker. Yeah, yeah. You lock them in, but they you got them like tied off on each <laughs> end. That's that old school Puerto Rican shit. My Uncle Tato is just like yeah. that, bro. His, his, he got, bro, he got bread. He live in a studio apartment and every, it's like a cell. It's like, but it's like a, a finely, bro, he got ninja swords on top yeah, of yeah. his <laughs> I walked into his crib one day, I'm like, yo. He, he yo, look you like Raphael. Like you're in the, in, still in jail, bro, but just like lavish. Like you know a good saying? cell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I was locked up with him. He would. The line would be in the mess hall. You walk right to the front of the line. Yeah, yeah. Joke right on people. Yo, these bum motherfuckers yeah, is broke over king here. Ass nigga. I get up four in the morning for that breakfast every day. Get in front of the line, and I'm every child. Even on Rikers Island, we switching outfits every child. Facts. You know what I mean? Shout out my dude Larry, Larry Lowe. We was doing it like that hard. Every child, different outfit coming through. Walking. <laughs> In no, Rikers Island, what building? On Rikers Island, four building and six building. That's crazy. Every, four building. So what was game. your bunk looking like? If you had how many fucking clothes you had, or y'all was switch? Nah, you have lockers. Yeah, so, yeah. You know, my but them shits just, ain't big. I mean, you just had enough. Fuck you know that what shit mean? up. Fuck it. <laughs> yeah, I was going and even t-shirts, all the sneakers. Like even up north, it was exaggerated what I had. Like, but I got all these sneakers for it. And even with the Tims, I was always um. When dudes would come in with beat up Tim's, I would, you know, buy them off them for cigarettes and all that. And then I would rip them up and send it back to the company for a new pair. Because they oh, had lifetime wallets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That shit, that <laughs> shit works, though. That's, that's, that's like shit climbing the Air Max bubble. Remember that I, I did shit? That, I did that in high school. That shit really works. Yo, I was sitting on maybe six, seven pair of Tim's where on a search down, the police, like, 
yo, you starting in here or whatever, you got to send all of this home. Like, I'm the dude with all the tapes. I got 80, 90 hip-hop tapes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm like blockbusting, yeah, you come rent a tape for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So on the search now, they like, you got too much stuff. Yeah, you got to send you it gotta home. You got to send the shit home. You got, what you got 70 bars of soap for, you got to send that home or they confiscate most of it, you know? That's, Yo, that's crazy. crazy. You know how you say you was like cutting patches off for the cookie shit, putting mm -hmm. on, like, did you ever start your own brand? No, yeah. I didn't, I didn't yeah. cut it off. On it was, it, it was, was a real deal. <laughs> it was the actual polo case the with the polo cookie polo. on it. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was made by polo. Oh, dead ass. Yeah, I didn't cut nothing. Now there was real make shit. It, he got polo. Yeah. And he did it. Yo, that's, what I, that's good that you mentioned that because he did have the low life brand. That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. you came yeah. up with your own now, brand. Is that still going? Yeah, it's still, it's still in the works out there. There's still a website you can order stuff on. Really? Online. Yeah. Did you get any backlash from low light? Like, the same low. But it really is low, though. You know what I'm saying? I mean, as long as it's low life, it don't matter. And Facts. that's what people cared about. Like, they won't touch it if anyone else did it. Facts. But if it's low life, then it's official. So what was it? Willie Esco came to you? Yeah. Came to me already with the idea. With the idea yeah, yeah. Set, with the but he couldn't do it without that. you. Of course not. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it just made it sense. It works out, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, now, I know you said you was born before hip hop started and you mentioned having tapes. What's your favorite era in hip hop? The beginning. My the, nigga, beginning, the beginning, like 80s? Like the beginning was pure, uncut, like the cocaine. Nobody watered nothing down yet. And it was just, and you couldn't get, just hear this anywhere. You had to be the live nigga with the sound. Yo come see what I got. Yeah. Like when you, when niggas had those cold crush tapes, there was only live niggas with those tapes. Regular niggas didn't have them tapes. So that separated you from everybody else too. But the beginning is the pure. I'm a nigga, I should have been in B Street. I'm in the Roxy's every week when B Street is out and all the people from B Street are in here every day. It's crazy cause you know, I just came for the, the panel discussion for Rocksteady, right? The Port of Rocksteady they had in New York this week. And it was about Latinos contributions in hip hop. Right. And uh, even last week when we did that, cra after the panel discussion, <laughs> Crazy Legs stood up and he inducted me into the Rocksteady crew as the, really? as the newest member. Now oh, in my 50s. Fire. But in my 50s, <laughs> yeah. I've been yeah. trying to get down since back then. Nah, you can you break got dance? it though. Oh, my, break dance, me. my break dance is, <laughs> I look at it like this. He didn't even say he nothing. Even he, said, he gave you that. Nah, no, this is the best way I could describe it. He was it. speechless. My rap is a resurrection of my break dance. Because when break dancing got played out, I kind of left the arts alone and hit the streets. When I started rapping, I took the same aggression from break dancing because I'm a master breaker. I do everything. I practice every day. You I used did. to. You used to. I can still do all that shit. No. I just don't try because, you know, it's like riding a bike. It's yeah, the same yeah, thing. Facts. I can still 1990. All right, so nigga. could you DJ? That's the last one. I, I could DJ like I cut and scratch kind of shit. Okay. I'm not a master, but like on all my first albums, I did most of the cutting and scratches, really? bringing the records Production in. too, right? You fucked yeah, up production? Yeah, I produce, I produce. So this motherfucker is all five elements of hip hop. Yeah, fast. Rapping, Everything, yeah. DJing, mm -hmm. b-boying, graffiti. graffiti. Fashion. Mm -hmm. Nah, what's the no. fifth one? DJ. Fashion no, is the fifth. They call, they, uh, according to KRS and others, they yeah. say it's knowledge. Okay. But to me, don't you gotta have knowledge to do all the other ones? So fashion. knowledge already applied, so I wouldn't consider that one of the elements. I say it's fashion, but I, yo, I've been on this campaign right now everywhere. When, when they ask me the same question, I'm like, yeah, since low life's now, they, they look in that fashion as the fifth element, but in all actuality, fashion was the first motherfucking element. That's it was number one, and I've never, when, every time I said it, I never heard a person disagree. That's a fact. Can you elaborate okay. on that a little bit? Like, why, why you think it's the first one? Because everybody was doing that everybody before they was fresh. breaking. They was yeah, being fresh before they were DJing. Like, you, you wasn't attempting to be a breaker. You came dressed like a breaker first. So you, everybody was trying to look the part. Even these rap niggas, everybody looking the part. Yeah, yeah, that's before fact. they, they actually was, But they was it. trying to look like drug dealers. They was watching the drug dealers and then the rappers. But that was, was a reflection of the neighborhood. Right. And, that's and, what it really and where was. they was from, how they look. Mm -hmm. Facts, man. Bro. Yeah, that fucking long bill is killing me, bro. Can't even it? fucking see your face. <laughs> Yo, I hate long bills. Yo, all we gotta do is drip chat. I hate long bills. Yo, why you hate long bills? 
It, it just don't look right yeah, on me. Same. For everybody now, else, it's cool. On, on me too, though. The, the, you talking yeah. about the long, yeah, yeah I, I don't know. That shit, look, it's covering its whole face. Nah, yeah, but a lot right. of people, rock, that's not really a long bill like that. The long bills be it's yeah, crazy. Yeah, actually yeah, called nah, a they great got, bill. Nah, they yeah, yeah, got, yeah. They got, so they got like, some crazy, crazy Yeah, I can't ones. fuck with that. I got a box full right now of duck bills I'm trying to sell, my nigga. Yeah. You know, I hook you up. Or I do trades as well, man, because I can't rock them. They just pile up on me. Now, let's, I got... A story, and we're gonna get a, a question from that. But I, y'all hear me talk about this open mic I used to fuck with EO Dub. End of the week, you know what I'm saying? It was the longest running open mic in New York City history. Now I remember they booked Thurston. I don't know if he remembers, but I'm sure he came with at the pyramid. Yeah, at the pyramid. Got it. They came with Mad, you know, low lives, and somehow after he finished performing, because I know. I knew the, the guys who ran it. They got, they took the speaker, but not the shell of the speaker. Like they left the shell of the speaker, but everything inside the speaker. <laughs> like an air conditioner. was gone. speaker. <laughs> I remember them like, yo, th- th- they got the speaker. While he either was on stage <laughs> or while music is still playing. <laughs> So I don't understand <laughs> how you I can take the speaker, speaker while music is playing and leave the show. What type of fucking shit is that? Uh, that's, that's my stuff, but... I ain't had nothing to do with that Brooklyn. one, bro. That's some Brooklyn. That's some, Brooklyn. That's that's some, some Brooklyn. ultimate Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Okay. So the wild, a wild situation like that is where we, we had a low-life basketball team, right? And we did a <laughs> tournament in Long Island against, like, some college players. And we lost. And I still took the trophy, yo. I took the trophy. I took it. Some Brooklyn shit. Yep, my I took shit. it. Took the trophy. We bounced. Now, rolling like that, that's real hip-hop shit, but it's also a detriment to an artist on the come-up. Now, do you feel that is a detriment? Like, like do you feel like that's... It's also how we... It's also good to roll like that, but it's mm-hmm. also hindering to an upcoming artist because people get scared, <laughs> then people don't book they you. Don't wanna they don't want to deal with people like in, that. Man. Absolutely you know, not. Nah, it's, it's more the people that come with you that don't know how to conduct themselves that ruin it. Now, if you could let motherfuckers know how to conduct themselves and they moving properly, then yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's very intimidating to see that crowd. Like, you know, I've always been the dude I showed with 100 motherfuckers. Yeah. And it's because I sometimes be like, yo, don't tell nobody, don't tell. Yeah, and yeah. niggas then still, still tow everybody. Out. And when you show up to the spot, there's 50 more niggas waiting for you outside. But it is, it is detrimental, man. And, and, you know, I've learned the hard way because I've, I've gotten so many invitations from different, you know, companies, artists, or, or events. And, you know, but what I keep forgetting is that the invitation was for me. So as soon as I show up, they probably want to get to know me, see what I'm about. But when I showed up with all these other people, you know, they trying and to figure out. Lot, yeah, and yeah. it creates a barrier for them to even get to you. Yeah. And then, like I said, a lot of our dudes is from the hood. So it's very intimidating to the people in the, in the corporate space of things. But I've learned to balance that. How about as a um, Spanish dude? It's, like hard, it's hard to get into like all, all, all these avenues that you're opening up. Do you find it difficult or is it, are they receptive? I think they, they're very receptive right now. Remember, the, the, the Latin population is like the biggest in this motherfucking it's country It's the most right growing, now. too. Yeah, yeah and facts. every business now, you have to be bilingual almost facts. everywhere. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it, it is growing in our favor at this point. To my understanding, like when I was doing all these, these Spanish albums, right, I was doing Spanglish. So it's like me and my dude, Don De Nero, shout out Don De Nero, we was having a conversation at one point where speaking about what was the majority of the language spoken in America right now. And you know, Spanglish? Yeah, because all oh, you Sp- speak Spanglish. There's more yeah. Spanish people here than anything. And nobody that, speaks complete English or Spanish. Everybody's shit is broken. It's all broken up. It's all Spanglish. You know what I mean? So that's why I did so many Spanglish albums, because I'm able to cross mad continents mm-hmm. and, 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 you know, and everybody could relate. And when I did my Spanish albums, you know, Black people bought them first, white people. Before yeah, yeah, I had yeah. even Spanish people buy my shit, everybody <coughs> else was buying them. You know what I mean? So I didn't lose uh, no fans with it. Yep. Yeah. Shit. Yeah. Most of the people in the other countries that were buying my English albums didn't even speak English. So when I released the Spanish album, it was the same thing. 
as long as it had the vibe, it had the grime, it had the styles, and you know, and it worked. Where did you get your flow from? Because you have a unique flow that a lot of, no, I, don't, I never heard, really heard a rapper with that. How did you develop your flow? Where did that come from? I developed it from listening to everybody in hip hop my entire life. You know, um, in figuring out how to be me. You know, I'm from the Genesis, so it's like originality is number Key. two yeah, after skill. Own, yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. probably originality yeah, yeah. and skill second. Yep. You know what I mean? So I always looked at that. Like, I would honestly say, like, I'm a giant Wu fan, right? So when I, I started rapping late, I started mm -hmm. rapping like late 90s. So, of course, I'm listening to Wu all day. So maybe in the beginning, I was probably more Wu Tang influenced. But I'm also heavy KRS info. I'm heavy Kumo D influence. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I have a piece of all of them within me. So that's how my style was born to be versatile. From what I've noticed, I'm one of the most versatile artists out there in hip hop. Like you can never predict the style of the next song that I'm gonna do. You know what I mean? And you I have a, a, a voice that you can tell of, of rip is mm -hmm. you. You know what I'm saying? How did, how did you get involved with the Lyricist Lounge? Especially, the, were you involved with the show? You was, yeah, you yeah, was the I show? was one of the creators of the show because being involved with the Lyricist Lounge, like I remember I met Danny Castro at a- Shout out to Danny of, Castro. Da Danny Castro and Aunt Marshall, all the, you know, the founders of the Lyricist Lounge. I met him at an ASCAP uh, demo, like listening party, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. To where Wendy Day, once again, she actually did it. She invited me and they played my demo at the ass cap. So, you know, when they heard it, everybody was basically blown away because I had super creative stuff, right? So Danny invited me to come do a show at the Lyricist Line. I never performed ever. Yeah. So, you know. Oh, you never later, performed, period. Never. I had never performed yet. <laughs> I was just I was just starting everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You said at the show, is this the show that was on MTV or are you talking about a no, separate? No, the Lyricist Line had, show? they were like, they throw concerts. Yeah, okay. we were talking about both. It was both. like a branded concert. Like an EO Dub type of, but it was yeah, Lyricist. Yeah, yeah, yeah kind of. Artist yeah. Showcase, basically. Yeah, yeah. Word, word, it was on regular okay. TV, right? Nah, no, uh, he's not the, talking the about actual, the show. He's the talking actual, the showcase was in, in clubs, City. and then the, sh the sh TV show was on MTV. Yeah, so yeah. it was a little bit of so both. So it was like an artist showcase. Like you said, so they would have like Most Def, Talib mm -hmm. Kweli, yep. Thurston Howe, word. Wordsworth, do a show at like Wetlands, mm -hmm. or like, like, like clubs, and then it became a show. Then it became a TV show. But it's like, like I said, I met them. I did the performance, my first time ever performing. Fucking 50 write-ups in magazines everywhere Fire. for yep. my first Shit performance. So it caused traction. After that, you know, the, um, they were making a Lyricist Lounge album. They invited me to come do a, a freestyle on it. So during the freestyle of us doing the Lyricist Lounge album, it was a, it was a skit called The Bathroom Cypher, where dudes is just rapping. So it's massive MCs in the room, in the studio. I'm, a, I'm, I'm an attack MC. When yeah, I yeah, come in the room, I'm attacking everybody. Shout out AL Skills. It's I attacked guy. him every time <laughs> I saw him. Yo, because I never seen another Puerto Rican dude or Spanish dude that nice yeah, off the head. Yeah, he was Colombian. Yeah, I'm off the head. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. he's off the head, yep. and I've never encountered that before. And he was fly with it. It's still mm -hmm. to this day when I see him. Yeah. He be on, he be and on he, he's a natural with it. Yep. So I've always attacked him whenever we were around. We always battled. Yeah, the first yeah. day I met him, <laughs> battled at the Rock Steady, one of the Rock Steady anniversary. But that night during the, the, the session for the Bathroom Cypher, we, Wordsworth and I and AL and all that, we were starting to rap in conversation to each other. That's so fire. Wordsworth started acting like a teacher. Right? Like, I'm teaching like he's teaching a yeah, class. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then I would raise my hand, teacher, like we were just playing it yeah, off. Yeah. And they were filming it. Fire. So when they filming it, that's how the old idea was born. Now, for the your documentary is going to be crazy. You know what I mean? So, and then the so rest you got executive rest. producer credit for that? Oh, no, not at all. Not at all. Damn. I didn't even get on the first season. Damn. The only reason I got on the second season was because they took Master Fool. You know, Master yeah, Fool, yeah, yeah. He, was actually, he was my rhyme partner and my artist at the time. So as soon as Master Fool went to do the show, he became the star. And then the check started coming in. And then I'm sitting in the table like this now, cause now I'm with Fu. Yeah, yeah. So, but I'm there constantly working, even though I'm not part of the production or anything. I'm just working. I'm putting in. I'm writing for Fu. I'm trying yeah, to help. Yeah. And you know, by the, when the second season came around, they had my seat waiting for me. 
So I became a writer and a cast member and things like that. I think I was one of the only writers who was supposed to just be a writer who had his own sketches and my own, you know, my own joints. They did a Still Live With My Mom sketch. You know, they let me do a bunch of different freestyles and it was fire, man. That was a groundbreaking show. 100%. How many seasons did it go? It only lasted two. That was a groundbreaking show, and that was a dope show at that time on yeah. MTV when MTV was right. everything. That's before yeah. social media, you know what Word. I'm saying? And that that kind of you know built the whole legacy. That's you know what I'm saying? Wow. He's like, oh, I love that. <laughs> nah, the show was the show was ridiculous, though. Who's your favorite Wu Tang member? Oh, come on, man. Probably yours. The same one as yours. Ghostface. Of course. It's crazy, you know, everybody's like, yo, you and Ghost look like twins. I've heard that a million times. Yo, you look just like Ghost. Oh, y'all got the state. Mad people would always tell me that. That you look like Ghost? Yeah. No, no. <laughs> uh, being a, a dirty Brooklynite just like us, yeah. you ever took a shit in the water? Where, like in the, in the beach? Yeah, yeah, any water. I took a shit in the street. I, I'm, I'm a, <laughs> there we go. Listen, man, there I, we go. <laughs> See, most people we have on this, they, they don't, front, yeah. they either front or they just ain't about that. Yeah. I took a shit in that water, yeah. took a shit in the pool in Puerto right. Rico, Nigga, take shits everywhere, you heard? Shit in the I done slept court. in the beach. I done, I, <laughs> but I could tell you this, I never took a shit in the bullpens, my nigga. I don't give a Facts. fuck. Yo, that's a fact. Me never. Neither. My brother did. Really? Oh, man. Yeah, he took his t-shirt off and he put it around the That shit ain't gonna help. That nigga was like, I got a shit. He kicked the dude, boom. It was a dude sleeping there. <laughs> Yeah, I said, I'll tell you, don't eat them fucking sandwiches, nigga. You ain't greedy. <laughs> nigga, I, I gave you a look. Nigga, no. Nah, the sandwich is to keep you from shitting. That's what the cheese sandwich is for, to clog you up, my nigga. So nah, you, already so had you don't shit. shit in that motherfucking nasty he ass. He took his t-shirt off, he put it on top of the bowl. Never, in the bowl. Never, man. He was on go. A lot. And I seen niggas take shits and we're like, Damn, he laid it up, too. That? Yeah, so yo, That's like him. He's like, yo, he can shit on command. He can shit yeah, anyway. Wow. <laughs> He's an on-demand like, shit. Like, you have to throw his hood up for that. <laughs> Get away from me. Oh. <laughs> nah, that wind, that wind hitting. Yo, you never, you. This water, I know, I know you're a Florida guy now. You know what I'm saying? How does this water make you feel? I don't, I don't, I don't fuck with New York beach waters, man. I don't either. You know, far Rockaway water, my niggas like broken glass everywhere, like Melly Mel <laughs> said. I think <laughs> they, they I think songs. he wrote that on Rockaway Beach. <laughs> nah, we, back in the days, we was in Rockaway Beach and a fucking dead ass whale, a whale was on the shore. Washed up. And the horseshoe crab. Y'all get horseshoe crabs yeah, here yeah. too, right? Yeah, yeah. Them shits look like German helmets from Facts. the wall, right? Facts. But they disgusting. They some they disgusting are. shit, man. Yo, I don't go in there. If I do, I go in this water once a year. I do the polar bear shit. Oh, you do? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah they dragged me to that's do it. I'm the mayor of Coney Island, bro. Yeah, I gotta do gangster. anything Coney Island shit. <laughs> yeah, but I gangster. go in with a hoodie, Ooh. Tim's, man, everything, I and I water. leave it right there. And I come when I come out, I usually got a chick waiting for me. Nah, they lying. They lying. Dead ass lying. And I be like, you did it. You did it? You did it too? I did it too and fell in one more. I did it with them in Y'all was high when y'all did it? Nah. Yo, when you come, yo, when you come out that water, bro, you feel warm for the rest of the day and on New Year's Day. Wow. Yeah, it's like does something to your body. How many times you did it? I did that, I do that shit every year for like the last 10 years. Bro, Yo, it was some days it'd you. be like this. It's like this type of weather, but a little colder, like more chilly. Some days I did it, it was it was snowing. You know that's what, what that's what the athletes do now as part of their regiment. Yeah, they, yeah, they go in the they ice soak water. In the ice water. They don't yeah, do it so. like we do. We just boop boop and we out of there. They be in the and, fucking and you, you be swallowing that water. Man. Hey yeah. yo! <laughs> Y'all niggas be swallowing that dirty <laughs> ass water. Back, right? Yeah, back in the day. <laughs> yeah. like, uh, you know what I mean? Back in the day. <laughs> you gonna swear? You gonna get poked with a needle in that motherfucker? Yo, I seen yo. somebody jump right there off of that pier and hit a car. Back in the days, and hit a car. You see? Oh, how far that is? The dude jumped off the pier, and there was a car in that deep water. <laughs> in like, in like the nineties, bro. Long That's tide. Long tide. I don't know what the fuck no, tide. We used, on, to, we used to, we used to dive Low off tide. right here. Long there was, tide. There was a ladder. Are you the prince of fucking tide? <laughs> yeah, I, I know. I could tell by looking at it. Yeah, bro. There's a high tide or low tide right now? Low. So, of course it's oh, low. Oh, low, low, low. I, I see like, what you did there. I see yeah, what you did yeah. there. You knew I was going to be here. Boom, boom. Good shit, boss. <laughs> right now, we're getting into the motherfucking Monster Energy drip check. Look, this might be the illest drip check we ever done because we oh, with the shit. motherfucking icon. So we're going to start it off with Vic Low. Let's go. Tell us what you're wearing. Your drip. Same shit. Low everything. 
No drawers, no socks, no tees. You know, the 92 ski joint. You know, the polo sport joint. My brother Low, son Low blessed me with this. My brother Low, Rudy Low blessed me with this. You know, I get a lot of blessings out here because <laughs> I give a lot of blessings. That's a I, fact. I give yeah. shit off like nothing. So we all like that in low life. You show up at dude's house and there's always gifts waiting, man. And, and that goes back and forth, man. A lot of brothers that like that. But everything low, the jeans, like I said, the socks. Those gloves are fire. Yeah, these gloves are necessary. <laughs> those Yo, not today? polo, those not polo. Yeah, these not polo. Ah, this clap it up, clap it up. These are <laughs> polo. <laughs> bro, ain't nothing gonna happen, bro. We Yo, right. today is <laughs> one day. <laughs> I mean, y'all know I always got, gloves, man. <laughs> you know, I always got the FYL on top. You know what I'm saying? FYL.NYC. Or you can visit the FYL store, 16th Street, Mermaid Avenue. That's on the top. Everything else is low. Got the low jacket. Got the low sweater, the low. Nims p- low. Yeah. Nims low. <laughs> Gorilla low. Yeah. Only thing, only thing I, that's not low is the kicks. I got the Yeezys. You know what I'm saying? But I, I got low socks, low drawers on, everything. You know supposed what I'm to saying? wear the polo sneakers and all that. He's supposed to go all out. He don't got polo sneakers yeah, on. Yeah. Him too. I, I, Fuck. Yo, I don't yo what, like what up with the kicks? Yeah, I was going like, to say, what up with the kicks? You should, you should I don't like, like How like come polo. they never had a yo, crazy design team for the kicks? You should they, do that. My favorite polo kicks are the ones from back in the days, and they haven't reissued them yet. Jay Z, when he made the S. Doc Carters, he made the attempt to do the black polo s- sneakers over. Like he made the Gucci yeah. remake, and the black joint was an actual polo remake. It, that was those were my favorite joints. Those polo with the red and blue going around the bottom. They look <coughs> like Stan Smiths. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But other than that, I'm, I don't like too many of, of the sneakers they be putting what out. About They're the not boots? my style. I can fuck with the boots. Okay. Some of them. Some you know of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some yeah. Of them. They be What's crazy. your favorite I'm, sneaker of all time? Not like any sneaker silhouette. I mean, you you know, I'm a Brooklyn nigga, man. Gucci sneakers is top notch. So Tennis like, Even though, you know, they won't fit like everything else, but the Gucci sneaker to me was the most dominant when you want to shit. Like you coming out and everybody fly, then I'm shitting on you with these. The Gucci's like straight yeah. shit. Everybody, it's still that way. When you got some exclusive Gucci joints, you know. It's crazy come in 86, my name was Gucci. You know what I mean? Like in my first bid, every, everybody called me Gucci because I was first into the Gucci heavy before I got into the. You should have still with them. And then you had a deal with nah, I'm just fucking with you. <laughs> <laughs> they gonna they gonna sign you soon, man. They yeah, sign you. Yeah, what's your drip, pops? Huh? The only one. Oh, not yeah, yeah. Let me see. I got a Brooklyn hat. That hair is crazy. Looks like you got you a throw that hay shit on. in the wind. <laughs> Dude, my shit fire. You tell you, look. I'm like fucking. It should look like what's his name from I'm Black like, Sheep. I'm like he, Fred Astaire, my nigga. You from can't David Spade when he <laughs> when the when the wind hit it. Ooh. I got a Heron Preston hoodie. I got polo drawers. You know what I'm saying? Representing. I do. Yo, right, bro. You I'm ain't gonna right, lift right. your shirt I got, up. I, I got true religion. Um. Oh hell no. I do. You got true, true religion. religion though? Yeah, true. Throw those shits in the water, man. I'm bugging, nigga. I got twelve. You're gonna acid wash them in the water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm bringing them back. Fuck. Nah, they ain't they no gonna sign me. It's crazy. I'm gonna go to church with that shit on. <laughs> yeah, that's my drip, man. I got uh, huh. the Row Project on a hat. It's my man Scram's brand. Um, up, bro? Some vintage polo, uh, corduroy polo. And I got some mac and cheese Tim's with the G on it. You mac and cheese. Mac and cheese. Mac and cheese. Oh, constructs. Constructs. Pardon me. Hold on, hold on. They call them mac and cheese. They call them from? cheese tins. Cheese, cheese, yeah, cheese, cheese. I never heard Don't that. Don't forget like the G Shock, my nigga. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, and I got the 20 I'm, I'm, uh, 20 year anniversary G Shock. Yeah, I've been yeah, doing yeah. the G Shocks since since yeah. the 90s when nobody was doing the G Shocks. This was like my Rikers Island favorite shit right here. You know on Rikers yeah. Island you gotta have yeah, yeah, a watch. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, uh-huh. if you the live man, you you gotta have a watch with your uniform and all that, you know? Niggas get booked for their watches too, man. That shit is right. crazy. Or just don't go to jail like I did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's fire. That's, That's a good message, right? boss. That's Top bah, five MCs. Bah, bah, There's no bah. such thing. There we go. It's every it's it's errors. You know what I mean? Like I like I, I always explain it. There's the blueprint MCs. Yep. There's your favorite MCs. And there's the the Genesis MCs. You know? So who's your favorite MC that you My enjoy favorite? listening to? I don't have one, man. Because every era I had a different one. Yeah. I remember when Cube took over New York. Yep. Mm. Right? Facts. Now, 
ever since the Yankee Stadium situation, I went back to playing all my Cube albums because he came and represented for the West the way he did it yeah. at Yankee Stadium. He didn't rhyme over no motherfucking lyrics, and I, he impressed me like he always has. But Who? Ice Cube? Ice Cube, man. Shout out to for Ice Cube one time, y'all. What's know, up? KRS was Megan. another one of my favorites, where for a long time, to me, he was the first king in hip hop because of the consistency, how much he kept dropping, and how much he bodied everybody in his way. Yo, I'll tell you this. Any new artist, it should be criteria that you have to see a KRS-One show. Because mm -hmm. he is the ultimate perform. He, there's a lot of motherfuckers out now that can't perform for shit. Go watch a KRS-One show and yeah. see how it's properly done. Facts, man. Straight like right. that. Kumo D was another one for me. You know, his vocabulary was heavy early in the game. You know, I studied everybody from the beginning, so he had a major influence on, on the way he came with it, with the vocabulary yeah. and the speed rapping, because nobody was speed rapping before Kumo D. He invented that shit, him and the Treacherous Three. So I loved all the older groups, man, the Crash Crew, you know, the Pumpkin and the All Stars, the Fantasy Threes, the Cold Crush. Like, I was heavy into that, you know? And that inspired me like crazy. But of course, you know, the Wu Ghost. Yep. It's massive to me. Um, in my opinion, one of the nicest, probably I would sometimes I could I tell him he's the nicest. It's Papoose. Facts. They don't give him the credit that my nigga, Papoose you know how crazy Brooklyn, it is Brooklyn, to be Brooklyn. that Facts. intelligent and that hood at the same time. <laughs> Niggas cannot pull that off. Most dudes are hood and ignorant yep. or intelligent and nerdy. Yep. Yeah, and Pat he he combines never, and that he shit. never dumbed it down. That's what I like. And he never. gets haircuts with his hat on. Facts. No. That's crazy. I've never seen that before. <laughs> no. Shout out Pat Poots, Not even man. LL fuck, was fuck, doing man. that back in the day. <laughs> but LL was also a major influence to me. LL man, was. You know, I, 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 nobody I, wants to see LL in the verses. I, I study L like crazy. You know what's crazy? LL gave me my first record deal. Nah. LL called me up one night, three in the morning. He, this is in the 90s. I, I got a beep, right? So I'm in the bed with my girl. I got a beep three in the morning. She's like, who the fuck beeping you three in the morning? <laughs> so I go, it's a California number, right? So I'm used to getting calls from California because yeah. I worked for MTV at the mm -hmm. time. So when they, people come into town, they would book me for something. So I called the number back and he was like, yo, this LL. I'm like, yo, stop playing with me. It's three o'clock in the morning. Yo, yeah. this LL. So I'm like, wow. Now I got out the bed, I'm hyped. Facts. Yo, yo, my nigga, we stood, it's three in the morning. We did not hang up that phone till like 10 o'clock the next day. Facts. So we was from rhyming back and forth. He read about me in the magazine and my beeper number was, was attached to the article. Oh, that's you crazy. know what I mean? That's, that's fire. So I ain't gonna lie, the next day a deal came. Had a messenger brought it, and you know, I got to hang out with L a couple of times, you know, and... and hey, a good dude. Good dude, man. I, I, once, once again, I got to shout him out. Much love, L. He just put me in his new book, The, the Rock the Bells Presents, this, yeah. you know, The Streets Win. They doing it big, too. Shout out Rock the yep, Bells. Yep. Yeah, L, 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 you know, just, just having him, because, yo, I was also a big LL fan. I'm a Kango nigga from back in the day. Yeah. I dressed every day with a Kango, my nigga. Every color, just like L. I fucked with my Kango on, all of that. That's how big. And you know, because I'm a New York nigga, but L was a major influence to me like that. I and, you never know, with a much Kango respect on. to him. Yo. You, was, you wasn't in the Kango ever, that's why. Yeah, my nigga, yeah, Kango yeah. was, you get body for your Kango Facts. too back in the days. It's no, like, no. it was hard to Slick hold a Rick. Kango. Slick Rick was that fucking that up you too. be on the train sitting down, the window open, niggas just whoop, snatching your top, Kango the little, from the window. The little window, that's crazy. Yo, what is, because this industry is filled with. A lot of weirdos. And a lot of people that you think is cool, you meet them and they not. What are some people that you actually gelled with? Like you just said, LL. Who's a couple other, that's M, that you just, like who's a couple other artists that you gelled with, that you fucked with? Oh, a lot, a lot, man. I, my brother, AG. Yeah. You know what I mean? Andre the Giant. Salute AG, super legend. Always, when, when I first started rhyming, a, AG came to my projects to hang with me just to school me. Yeah, yeah, on yeah. What to expect. That's fire. You know what I mean? I, cause, you know, a I'm lot of green. MCs don't do that to other MCs. Yeah, in fact, that's swag. important. You know, told me how to move, how to conduct myself. A lot of dudes were basically telling me how to conduct myself because I was very different yeah, at yeah, the yeah. time. So I didn't understand. I had to tone it down. I had to change my approach. You know, um, AG was definitely one of them. I always, you know, Sadat, that's my brother. Yep. That's my little brother. You know, I brought him into our family. and. 
So that is one of the reasons that low lifes went worldwide. Because once he started throwing those L's in the air, you know, he's a major figure in hip hop. So the whole world seen Dot doing it. It helped spread it across the world. You ever man. fucked with Grand Poober? Not, nah, not, not personally. Because he was rocking the low. Yeah. He made the, you know, the, <coughs> that that classic MTV, Yo MTV mm -hmm. raps. We got the low. Alpine, Jordan, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now you know we always uh, we could Grand Poop was another one we consider an honorary low yeah, life. Yeah, yeah, fact. Just like Raekwon. Yep. What you about know, Yeezy? Honorary, huh? What about Yeezy? Yeezy? I mean Yeezy, cool man. You know I can't I can't <laughs> I can't shit nah, on. He Yeezy. was rocking polo too. Why you ask that question? Not because I remember on one of the records I think on um was it uh graduation. Mm -hmm. My nigga, please. How you gonna say I ain't no low head? Cause low life was, you know. I was like, where, where did things. that come from? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, the people were saying little things, you know, like hating on Yeezy and all that. But I'm like, this is a culture, my nigga. We can't pigeonhole it. Yeah. I'm happy to see everybody accept it as they own and take it on. Absolutely. Why am I gonna be mad at that? And back to Facts. what you were saying as far as the nerds and, and the weirdos and my nigga. The weirdos outnumber us now to where we're the weirdos. Yep. There's more of them than there is us. And we in the age of technology to where you got to have some intelligence and some smarts. I think th this generation is the generation that read the most ever because now they texting and reading. Everything is, Shit. you know, in the Internet. Before, motherfuckers never picked up a newspaper, or yep. a book, not, including me. outside. Yeah, yeah, I wasn't that's... one of them niggas. I ain't go to school. Yeah. I ain't do nothing. Well, of that. I felt like even with Ye, like, I feel like he was inspired by the culture. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it was yeah. just a reflection of that. Definitely. Just what a... I got a question. So everybody thinks of, like, Rocky, Kanye as, you know, two of the biggest people to kind of like right? join right. fashion and hip hop, but you're really one of like the first icons to kind of bring fashion into hip hop like that. And you probably don't get as much, as much credit as you, as you deserve. Is there anyone else who is also influential that you don't feel like gets enough credit for their contribution to um, the intersection gotta, of fashion and hip hop? You got to give L credit, LL. Um, Capadonna's another one. Capadonna. Capadonna, he goes hard with wardrobe. his wardrobe. Poppy yeah. wardrobe. Yep. I always shot him out. Um, there's a lot, man. I would have to think back. Like, there was a lot of dudes doing it on their album covers, too. That's how you knew who was flying, who wasn't. And uh, magazine covers. Yep, like, those yep. shits was like photo shoots, like billboards. I remember Slick Rick had that. Slick, Kango with Slick a cardigan. Slick another one. Yep, you Slick. had the cardigan shit. Doug, even Dougie Big Fresh. chains. Dougie Fresh and the Get Fresh crew, all their album covers, they was Fila down. Yeah, Eli had the toe, Bally's this, Bally, y'all ever touch Bally's? Yeah, fact, yeah. I did. That was before my era. Oh man, Bally's was another heavy Rikers Island thing. If you could hold a pair of Bally's in a silk shirt, that's what you wear on a visit. <laughs> they, just did a, they just did a tennis shoe that's fire. Oh, the, yeah. a new, they brought something a new back? One. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause that, back in the days, it was the Bally competition sneaker, my dude. It's like 85, dudes was going crazy for them things. And this is at the same time the hype of the Bally, suede Bally was popping. Yeah. yeah. Them's gems. Oh, you said them's gems. You y'all y'all doing the whole project? No, no, no. I oh. want to, but not nah, that two hundred. Like, it's just he's in fucking Arizona. Two hundred is the new broken language. That's how everybody sees it. Like that combination hasn't been done that strong since that song. You know why? Because. Y'all sat in the same room and did it, right? Absolutely. There you but go. I knew when I was doing that album, the Gorilla Monsoon album, I was like gems was one of my, is, is one of my favorite MCs. Um, and I went to Cypress where he was living at the time. He had the studio in his crib and I sat down with him and I said, yo, I want, I want people to recognize your skills like they recognize mine. Mm -hmm. So let's do some back and forth shit. We sat for eight hours the first day. We got up to like almost the end. But I said, yo, we're gonna add more. I'll come back tomorrow. I went back the next day for like three hours and we finished that, but we went like song, it was yeah. really like like integral like yo you're gonna say this word you're gonna say this and we really made it like a thing where it was it became what it was and that's why because we put the effort into it mm -hmm. it wasn't like all right i'm in the studio let's get this done mad quick you spit two balls two balls yeah. now nah, we really wanted to make it intricate and it came out like that and i'm Fire. super proud of that fucking yeah. song yeah, yeah. that song you know is big gems is one of the frontline mcs in low life Absolutely. And I, I, I went to pull him in to come to be part of our family. Like, I went to get him. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Like, yo, 
we need you with us, my dude, because yeah, you's a monster. Yeah. And we need more monsters. You know, I, I, I'm always trying to be surrounded by the greatest. Now, I don't want to be the greatest. Facts. I want to be surrounded Absolutely. by the greatest. And, yeah, you know, yeah. that makes iron us sharp extremely iron. powerful. That's man. one thing me and Sean Price used to talk about, steel sharp as steel. Yep. You know what I'm saying? When you're around nice individuals, it makes your, your pen game nicer. Definitely. And we always wanted to be around that type of shit. So, yeah, man, that, that, the Spit Gems. If you, ain't, if, you ain't, if you watching this podcast and you ain't heard 200 by me and Spit Gems, you're yeah, fucking up in that. life. Go check, go check that. that right now. Yo, listen to this. I got one. One movie <laughs> that I left off my list, and this is on my main list, Apocalypto. Oh, yeah, that shit Apocalypto is one of the illest movies Ever. You got you fuck with movies? What's your what's of your course. what's your what's some what's a sleeper that people don't know about? Put them on. Uh, I don't know too many sleepers, but um, B Street is my favorite movie. Yo, we of just all watched time, that the man. other day. I went I'm, to the I'm, theater. And I'm a that. I'm a hip hop fiend, so it's B Street for me. American, you know, B Street, gang shit, American me, shit like that. American man. me, that's a good movie. Those, yeah, those yeah. are the movies that sleeper, really touch was, me. Uh, duh. Yeah. Come on. Bro, you gotta press. fucking relax, bro. I'm not... Fuck his sleeper for today. We out of here. <laughs> All right, Bing it. bong. Nah, hit him sleep. Nah, hit yeah, him yeah, sleeper. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Road to perdition with Tom Hanks. That's a Hank. fire one. That's a sleeper. Absolutely. Wow. See, he Absolutely. shit on him. That's a I good... watched that the other day. <laughs> That's a good. That's a great movie. movie. Facts. Who they had in it? They had um. Damn, Daniel Craig. No, no, no. They That's had like 007. one of the old mobsters the in old, it. The old dude is good. Is a good actor. I forgot his fucking name. It's not the, I don't know. I, I watch a lot of movies to study the writing. You know what I mean? Because you know I get busy with the scripts. And Absolutely. All that. Yeah, facts. I like movies that I cannot predict the end. I could predict every fucking movie from the beginning. I tell That's my why girl, Usual That's Suspects the killer. was good. That's the killer. I tell my girl every time we watch, as soon as it starts, because they're going to show you the motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, before yeah. Before anything, they're going to give you the, a clue, you know? Foreshadow that's that how my mother is, bro. Work. I hate watching movies well because she'd be like, That's the killer, right? I'd be like, Come on, mom. You gotta relax. She'd be right, though? Yeah. Uh, hey, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know that's why Usual Suspects. That's another one. That's a good movie, too. Kaiser Soze. Kaiser Soze. Yeah. Did you know he was the killer when you watched that movie? Nah, I didn't. That, was, that yeah. fucked me up, too. I ain't gonna hold you. <laughs> or Departed. Departed. Right? Departed. Departed? The ending yeah, of Departed was crazy, too. The Departed, that was a good movie. What was, it, what was The Departed again? The, DiCaprio was, was a cop, Leonardo DiCaprio and Matt Damon. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Jack Nicholson Jack was the Nicholson. bad guy. Facts. Look at these fucking gems. We put yeah. some women here for Vic Call Lowe. them over here. <laughs> look, look on. We brought some ladies for you. I'm a married man, man. Yeah, <laughs> me too. Not yeah. love. They here for you, look. Yo, Nems, your lens is up. Uh, we paid. That's just, y'all paid for those, right? Yeah. <laughs> Say paid. The water's all over that shit. All right, so we done, man. The water's on the fucking lens. The water's on the lens. Salt water. That's Salute we really Thurston outside. had a third for yeah. coming through. Still he was fun. outside with us, live in Coney Island. Coney Island. On a rainy day. Acid water waiting over there. <laughs> Thought <laughs> Skillistrator's out now. Tell him. Produced by Mateo Getz, my brother. You know what I mean? Lock coming. Get ready for that low life series. Get ready for all, everything else. Make sure you check that Timberland documentary, Joplin. You know yeah. what I mean? Pick up all that, that new LL book, The Streets Win. You know, hey, yo, the Biden, put some everywhere. respect on LL's name too. That was crazy, mm -hmm. right? Say that Biden again. fucked up LL Cool J's name. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, he's not hip hop, so you yeah, know. he's out of here. Hold, you he can't hold. He's out of here. Him, Fuck him. He's out of here. Exactly. LL that. was the great man. L was the great. Facts. Yo, it's been an honor and a privilege oh, having Brooklyn thank legend. You, thank OG, you for having me, man. Yeah, thank you, I, I've been watching y'all show, laughing my ass off. You know, I try to be a little funny today, man. I just be. You did a good job. You did a good job. <laughs> nah, I'm a natural funny motherfucker, man. It's just, you know, you can't be, you can't play with everybody, man. Fact. Yeah, yeah, I respect that. that. That's a Y'all do seem positive. Y'all doing your thing, man. I respect the work going on. I'm proud of you just Thank as well, you, man. man. Just to see you reach the plateau you have. And now, you know, we have another face representing for us. And, you know, it, it greatens all of our chances of, of dominant. Because we coming for dominance, man. I'm I like fuck, that. Fuck I like doing that. my thing. I like that. I like we're that. We coming for dominance, man. And yeah, it's facts. not a game, man. And I will be back in Coney Island. Make sure Nims, because he said we're about to do some more songs. So, you know That's what I mean? That's a fact. Next That's time I come word. back, it's like, all right, we're going to play some of the songs we did. That's a fact. 100%. You got my word. We out yeah. here. Bing bong. Don't sorry, ever disrespect me. Ever, 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 ever disrespect, ever, ever, ever disrespect, ever, ever, ever disrespect me. Pussy.